Well, hello, Internet. Today I'm going to explain exactly what a swap and a derivative is in an easy-to-understand way. So why did I decide to do this presentation? Well, there's been a nearly constant conversation on this matter for the past year and a half. Here I'm going to explain derivatives futures options in an understandable way. Derivatives, first off, were created to help banks investors and corporations to manage risk. A derivative is a financial arrangement between two groups and a payment to one of these parties is made based off the performance of an agreed upon price move of said item. These items can include commodities, corporate bonds, currency, government debt, interest rates, mortgages, stocks, etc. You get the point. So here's a simple example. Let's say we go out and I buy you a cup of coffee for one dollar. We agree that the next time we meet you will return the favor. We sign contracts and everything. Real serious situation. So what I did was I bought a future cup of coffee today for a dollar and you agreed to give it to me at any time in the future. If we don't see each other for five years or the price of coffee skyrockets, I will make out quite well. If, however, coffee is available out of the tap for next to nothing, I've just essentially lost my dollar. Derivatives are just a bet that something will be worth more or less at some point in the future. The only difference between my coffee example and real derivatives is complexity and also time limits. Options and derivatives and swaps normally have a limited time limit. In my coffee example, I said any time in the future. There are thousands of different kinds of derivatives that are managed, for the most part, by computers because of their overall complexity. There are basically two types of derivatives, options contracts and forward contracts. These can either be traded on an exchange or privately. The private ones are the ones that currently have everyone upset. An option gives the buyer the right, but not the obligation, to buy or sell something at a predefined price until a specific date. This option normally costs a fraction of the cost of the asset, obviously. A forward contract or a future swap forces the buyer and seller to make a trade on a specific date in the future and at a set price. So why are derivatives needed? They take a lot of risk out of doing business by spreading that risk to many other people for a fee. Businesses in this country would be very unstable if they weren't allowed to stabilize their raw material and currency risks with derivatives. Let's look at Southwest Airlines as an example. Southwest, during the period when gas costs skyrocketed to $4 a gallon, saw their profits soar because they had established derivatives that allowed them to buy fuel for $50 a barrel, roughly. Without those derivatives, they would have been in the same shape as many other airlines. That definitely would have cost them a loss in profits, but also a loss in jobs. Derivatives exist for one reason. They are the cheapest way for a company to protect themselves from normally unforeseen risk. So why are derivatives potentially dangerous? Well, you may have heard of a word called leverage. Leverage can multiply losses or gains quite substantially. Remember, when you enter into a derivative agreement, you pay a fraction of what the asset costs. Also, the asset is normally purchased and then sold to the counterparty at nearly the exact same time. So let's use Southwest as an example again. They bought the option to purchase barrels of fuel at $50 a barrel when those same barrels were worth about $35. Sounds stupid, right? Wrong. They paid a fee per barrel for that option. The counterparty didn't buy the barrels and store them at $35 a piece. The reason why is oil rots. On June 2008, oil now cost $125 a barrel. Southwest counterparty is now on the hook for buying those barrels of oil for $125 and then selling them for only $50. That's a $75 loss per barrel for a measly couple of bucks that the option cost. Southwest got a return of 37.5 times roughly. That's 37.5 times, not percent. Their counterparty lost 37.5 times. This is why options are potentially extremely dangerous. That's leverage, the chance that you can lose considerably more than you ever invested or made from the original investment. Now, when you combine options with margin, this is when we're talking about extreme danger. What makes derivatives even more dangerous is when those contracts are purchased on margin. When you purchase something on margin, you are buying it with loaned money. Because currency movements are so slight, being fractions of a penny, to increase the return on those pennies, traders might put up $10,000 as collateral in exchange for $100,000 to invest with. This is called buying on margin. Now, if the currency increases by a penny, they made a dime instead. The problem lies in what happens when prices unexpectedly drop dramatically. Then the guy comes back looking for a repayment on the loan, being a margin call, 
Now instead of losing 10,000, you lost 100,000 plus interest. This actually happened with a company called Long-Term Capital Management back in the 80s and nearly caused a global collapse of the financial system and most people don't even know that existed. If you leave a comment below, I will do a presentation on Long-Term Capital Management. Very exciting. So what are investment firms being accused of currently in 2010? Well, major investment firms are accused of selling derivative contracts that they knew would fail. Kind of like taking out an insurance policy right before you kill somebody. They supposedly created mortgage-backed security pools that they designed to fail and then bought insurance that would pay out if the mortgages failed. Well, they did, and the insurance contracts paid out. That's why AIG collapsed. They were the biggest seller of these insurance products. Firms have also been accused of what's called front-running. This is when you know a big investment is going to be made in a security that will drive up the value of said security. So you buy that security before you put through the large investment in said security. You then sell the security and make a nice profit. If you have any further questions on investing, I was employed by one of the major brokerage houses. I can talk about pretty much anything. And if you'd like the advice of a former stockbroker, there's nothing to gain by providing you with that advice. Leave your questions in the comment section below. Till next time.